Hi, I'm Joel Silver, and uh, we're here to talk a little bit about Ultimate Frisbee. I went one summer, summer of 68, to Mount Hermon, which was a, a prep school in, in, the, uh, in the east, in the northeast, in New Hampshire, I think it was. And um, they had a program, summer program. We began playing a game that was similar to Ultimate Frisbee. It was a, a kind of a running Frisbee game. And I think it had come, I don't remember the guy's name. I think his name was Jared Cass. I'm not sure who kind of, and I think he'd went to Amherst. And I think the game had either, that game had come from Amherst or his hometown, or I, remember, I don't remember. But when I went back to high school that September, which I guess would have been a September 68, I brought that game back with me to Columbia High. And I taught it to my friends. I'm Joe Barbanel, Columbia High School graduating class of 1972. And I've been playing Ultimate Frisbee continuously from 1970 till today. From my view, there are really two kinds of origins of Ultimate. One is the game starting with the class of 1968. We did alter it to work for both the terrain and the logistics of our particular field and time and place of play. I think just as a joke one day, I think I may have gotten up at the student council and said that I moved that a committee be formed to investigate the possibility of introducing Frisbee into the high school curriculum. And I think as a joke, the council passed it. Joel had been exposed to a game that was similar to Ultimate when he was at summer camp. And when he came back to Columbia after the summer, he started a team here that was kind of a goof. It wasn't intended to be a real sport. It was intended to be a counterculture joke against real sports. Um, so their rules had all kinds of crazy things in it, like the two teams play until a player dies. It was the members of the Columbian newspaper. But, but I was a member of the school newspaper team, and we played against the student council. And then, of course, he played it up very big in the paper. And that was like the first real game I can remember being played that was kind of in some kind of official sanction. And they mostly were having fun in the night at a parking lot, a Columbia High School parking lot, because there were lights there. In the fall, we began playing in the evenings. It became a great kind of fun thing to do. And as he began to play regularly, the game began to evolve into the game as it exists now. And so many elements. I mean, you know, I had, there was a great, I think uh, there was a great moment in I think Thunderbolt, one of the James Bond movies where he was shooting skeet and he says, pull, and they, and that's where I got the idea to say, pull when you throw the Frisbee. When we first started, we were just looking to have fun. It was something that we could do in the evenings and it was a great way for people to get together and have a, a good time. The spirit of the game is something that really makes it unique. There's no other sport where you call your own fouls. Um, the reason there were no referees is because everybody who was involved in the sport was playing the sport. You just get a bunch of friends together and you, you play a game, you call your own fouls. So the whole spirit of the game thing was built around the fact that we were all friends, we all knew each other. We had to play a game that was on an honor system and we had to play a game that was gentlemanly. The three of us, myself and Buzzy Hellring and Johnny Hines, were very close friends. And so we together kind of worked on having the game kind of get as broad an appeal as we could. At the end of that year, which was 19, which I graduated high school in 1970, to so the end of that year in 1970, we all went to colleges. We all went to college and we all agreed to kind of bring the game with us to our colleges. But I wasn't as aggressive as some of the other guys were who really wanted to kind of be Johnny Appleseed or Frisbee. When our class got more involved, we really saw it as being a great sport. We saw it as being something that could grow. And we reached out to other local high schools and had them start teams, um, Milburn, Kearney, uh, Passaic Valley, and then when we graduated and went to college, we started teams at our colleges. A bunch of other schools in, in the Northeast. They were, they were all started by um, Columbia alumni or people who were from the NJFC. Rutgers and Princeton had teams to start there. Buzzy Hellring started the team at Princeton. And I'm not sure who started the team at Rutgers, but by 1972 when Herb Kelp and Jeff West got there, 
they really brought the team into um, a very organized format and even orchestrated for Rutgers to play Princeton in the very first intercollegiate game on the 103rd anniversary of the Rutgers-Princeton college football game, which was the first intercollegiate football game ever played. So we were 103 years later. And as our 1972 class started playing more and more, we saw the game being an Olympic sport we could even see that one day there would be pro leagues and we always had a vision that it was going to take off and be a tremendous worldwide kind of activity. I see competitive frisbee in the future being played in front of and among a lot more people. It's one of those fast growing sports so I remember lacrosse a couple years ago kind of being in the same spot. Uh, so I see the future of ultimate competitively being played with much bigger crowds and with much bigger pools of athletes. The biggest difference between frisbee and other sports to me is just how highlight filled a game can be. A lot of times you'll watch a whole basketball game or you'll watch a whole baseball game and you get one or two highlights out of it, but sometimes you watch a high level frisbee game and there's just constant back to back bodies flying through the air. So that's I think what makes Ultimate kind of special. So the alumni game, I believe it started in 1969. Um, we play on the Columbia High School senior parking lot. Street, um, which is where the first game, all organized game of Ultimate was played in 1968, found here at Columbia High School. Um, and now every year on Thanksgiving night, we um, come back to the same parking lot and play uh, alumni versus the current team. Kind of symbolic because this is also where our, where Frisbee was created. In the same parking lot, there's a rock with a plaque on it. We've been going there since middle school to meet for tournaments, JV, varsity. It's kind of just like a tradition. Actives are wearing dark, alumni are wearing light. If you know, the good news is traction isn't a problem. What is, however, is other players. Spectators who aren't paying attention. Traffic for anyone who hucks too long. In case you haven't noticed, there are now, I think, they're bike rack type things over there. Run into one of them, we'll be calling you limpy from now on. Don't do it! <laughs> CHS active players are looking really strong against this alumni team. Now, it's game point for the CHS active players. <laughs> Alumni are looking strong. <laughs> oh no! Oh! What? <laughs> How do you feel right now? How do you feel right now, Captain? A million bucks. <laughs> Wait, did someone say someone? Yo, line it up! That nation! Winning record. Class of 2018, winning record. So we're in one of our guest houses right now, getting ready for uh, day two of uh, the EULA tournament. Um, yesterday we uh, were able to work hard and won all three of our games, and now we're in the uh, championship bracket. So today, hopefully we'll go out again and work hard and... Uh, Catch that dub. The host makes good food. Yeah. In Oklahoma, what? No. Shut up, Dan. Having some healthy breakfast. Like oh, wow. Heck of fruit. Oh, wow. A hard boiled egg. Some bacon. Zach, can you pass me that bowl?
Washington State. We're up. <laughs> Eula, right, 2016. Wow. Let's get it, man. Me oh, too. Huh? Day one. Oh, <laughs> oh, right. 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 All right, all right, we'll do this. Max, come on. Game is tied. We're at Universe Point. We win this. We go to the finals, right? This is it. This is what you train for. Two hours. We felt shorthanded a little and just frustrated at that and also the fact that um, the game ended in our cap, it didn't go to the full 15 points and I feel like uh, we could have had a different ending if, it, if we had more time. Um, it was a game of runs and they had a little, a little more of a run than we did. Where are we going? Dates. Oh. Oh. Okay. Go meet Treasurer of Student Council. Everyone vote Eric Biden for Treasurer of Student Council. All right, crack. Eric, walk on at Georgia. <laughs> Yes, you're allowed to do 100%. Today, this marks our tournament, okay? This is our tournament. This is our turf. This is our field. Do you want who won here last year? We had Veggie Frisbee. Yeah. We should be able to take home the win. Yeah. Let's go, Three, one, two, three. CHS. Heads up, Westfield! Jacob just scored. We're on a bye right now. We're getting ready to play watch on in like five minutes or something like that. Alright, CHS, Hopefully. get your cleats on! Right, here you go. We need, out, we need to come out next half firing. They are so tired, so we just run them into the ground. We're running 22 deep. But, they they can do nothing if every time we're just running, running, like running, 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 running. They're yeah. so tired. Yeah, they have like yeah. ten players that they're actually playing, and they're all exhausted. Listen, listen. Guys, if you want something you've never had, you've got to do something you've never done. Okay? Ooh. You have got to pull something out of the hat now, because this game, like I said, if you don't put in the work for this, this is going to go down as the game that CHS barely beat Watch Up. That's not how we want to go into tomorrow. That's not how we want to go into the championship game as we just barely squeaked to win out. This has got to be CHS dominates. Okay? CHS dominates is the name of this game. But you have got to play to that name and make it happen. Okay? Do something you've never done before. Achieve something you've never had. You got it? Yeah. Do it. The county community college? <laughs> That's not their field. That's our field. I just want to say I am I'm proud of every single one of you. That game was really physical, really tough, really intense, and I'm proud of every, the way every single one of you fought. Every single person on this team stepped up, stepped up to the plate and played in a major way. And that's how we that's how we win, get a team win, guys. Great job. One, two, three. Never know. One, two, two games tomorrow. Day two states. Um, 
it is raining. It's been raining since we all woke up. It's not a fun time. I don't know how we're supposed to play. All the fields are flooded. It's basically just walking in a pool. Day two states. Uh, pretty bad conditions. It got canceled in the morning, a lot of rain and lightning and thundering. So we're playing on turf. We only have two games today. We won our first game. 11 to 2. We rolled our D-line, played amazing, got all the breaks we needed. And now we're coming into the semis we're trying to beat uh, bring the heat. You know, uh, last year didn't go so well in the semis, so we're really trying to focus in it's a little bit deep. So we'll take that into account and play the best we can. Yeah, last year we lost in this same exact game, so... So let's hope that doesn't happen again. Yeah. Right? Oh, get it. First, we did it. We're going to the state final. Oh yeah! I'm proud of every single one of you. A lot of you were here or were watching when we we booked it last year. And I'm really glad. I'm really glad that we uh, came here today, showed some growth, showed some maturity, and took care of business. Oh my! I just want to say, we played hard. We executed. We to the finals, baby! One voice. I don't know. I mean, I don't, I don't have much to say. You guys look really good out there. I'm, I'm, I'm liking what I'm seeing. Like, I'm confident in you guys too. But I think like it's really important in these situations. Like, you just take it one point at a time. Um, Westfield, they didn't reach the state finals that I know of until 2014, which is the first year they won. Um, they beat us in the semifinals, 15-4, I believe. Um, and now, since then, they've won in 2016 and 2017. Donovan. What is your key to the game for Columbia to win this game? Uh, I really think that Columbia has to work on these unders. Tristan Yarder, their uh, their best player, is out currently with a sprained LCL for two to four weeks. So if they really work the unders, it can work Westfield's uh, best offenders. I think they'll be on their way to a victory. Absolutely. Westfield starting on offense here. Dave Perry with the disc now in the middle of the field. Finding Eli Weaver. Weaver, one of the seniors on a senior heavy Westfield team. Johnny Sickles laying out to save possession. Another senior. Finding Perry up the line. Perry putting it in. That is a goal for Westfield to open up the scoring. Dave Perry scoring for Westfield is now one to nothing on the assist from Johnny Sickles. And now to Jacob LaRue. That is a break for Jacob LaRue. He reels it in the front of the end zone and one that many have played in over the years. We got a quick turnover here, short field. A little bit of a miscommunication there for Columbia. Westfield now knocking on the door, looking downfield. Jacob Sigmund wide open in the back of the end zone. No one near Sigmund, and that'll be a goal for Westfield. Westfield looking in control early on. Columbia unsure how to respond. 3-0 for the Blue Devils. Oh, Westfield early on in this one. They're leading 3 to nothing so far. But Luke Barry with a little shimmy up line. Beats his man. Puts it downfield. Johnny Sickles beating the layout defender. Zach Singer got a few on the last point. Unable to get one on this one. And that is going to be another goal for Westfield. 7-2. Just a point away from half now for Westfield. These two coaches had a chance. Two sets of coaches had a chance to talk to their players at halftime. I can imagine the, the message for Westfield right now has to be don't let up. And the message for Columbia has to be similar, and we're going to get right back into this. At halftime, um, I was like on the floor, like just over it. 
you know, like all of our friends and family came out to watch and we were just getting smacked, it was 7-2, so it was pretty disappointing because that was like the first impression all of our friends had on uh, Frisbee and on our team. There were a lot of emotions during the game, but the biggest one was definitely anxiety. Oh crap, like, we're getting toasted. We really thought we had a chance to win it, and when we went down 7-2, it was kind of hard to deal with that fact, I guess. It was like, wow, we're clearly outmatched. As Columbia works the disc down to the end zone, Lyle Berkeley getting wide open into the end zone. That's Berkeley's second goal of the game. That's big for CHS in the second half. Definitely a momentum boost for sure. We'll have to see how Columbia responds. They trail 7-3. That was huge. There's a lot of time left also. If you, uh, there's, there's a lot, lot, of, time. There's a lot, there's a lot of, time of time left. New Jersey. Yeah, rain was supposed to be in the forecast, but we haven't seen it at all at this point. Hopefully we don't get rain. Very humid so far, but no rain to speak of yet. Dan Freeman Brown uncorking a deep shot downfield, looking for Aylin Learned. Jack Shoffey just peeling off, knowing he had no shot. Learning coasted into the end zone. That is a goal for Columbia. A quick strike for CHS. That was big right there. That was the deep shot that they really needed. Freeman Brown and Learned, those two are really key to this team and are going to be key if Columbia wants to come back. And we've got a little bit of an odd jump just situation here. Spiegel and Weaver debating over who had it first. Gonna be sent back in the end. One of the staples we've seen so far of this rivalry is the intensity never gets in the way of spirit. Spiegel taking a really wide looping shot downfield. Group piling up and Laverne goes up and gets it. And tosses it in the end zone. Dan Freeman Brown brings it in. Yeah, that, the senior tracking it down in the front of the end zone. That was huge. He hit that huge uh, backhand hook to learn it earlier in the point. Got called back on the travel. But Columbia was able to get the D on Westfield's own end and worked it up the field quick. Devern with the big grab two on the end zone line. Grinding it out, Columbia definitely is at this point. They trail 9-5. to five, Looking to make a comeback. Crowd getting into it again as the Columbia players come off the field trying to pump up. Those on the sidelines and those cheering them on in the fan section. Beagle working hard underneath, looking downfield, finding Harris in the front of the end zone. That is a goal for Columbia, making a break. Yeah, first break in the game. That is ginormous for them. They're really back into it now. Their crowd is cheering hard for them. And uh, we see 9-6, still a decent amount of time left for, the, uh, for Columbia to get back into this game. Single with the disc on the sideline now. Learned dancing in the handler space. Singer can't find anyone, takes a shot downfield. Perry elevating, can't get to it. Learned in the back of the end zone, and he drags his foot, and he is in. That is going to be another goal for Columbia. 9-7 now, CHS trailing. And just like that, the red and black are coming back. Oh, wanting to work it short, they've not taken any over-the-top shots to this point in this zone. And as I say that, of course, they take one. Incomplete from Johnny Sickles, looking for Josh Camacho. Locking up on the dump space, laying out and knocking it away. Dave Perry getting it right back. And now, getting some jeers from the Columbia fan section. And instead finds his senior teammate, Josh Camacho, for the goal. 10-7, Westfield finally punches one in on offense. Harris, not with too many options in the end zone. Resets to learn and learn it, breaks around, finds Harris. And that is a hold for Columbia. 10-8 now for CHS. We've talked about relationships within the team, and, and Ben and Aylin are a big one. You guys are probably going to clock on now. Okay, why not? Who's coach? Yo, Who's coach? coach? Yo, Who's look, coach? Ari! Wow, Ben Harris was so oh easy. Jacob no up line! Yes, yeah, Jack. Yeah, yeah Gary! Jack Chaffee. Weaver upfield, layout D from Aylin Learned. Columbia with another turnover for Sear. Binder underneath now. Binder winding up, taking a shot downfield. Blading backhand. Finds Bender in stride. Dave Perry dropping off. And we get a great cut there from Spiegel. Another break for Columbia. Tying up now at 
10, Max Spiegel from Bender. The Columbia crowd is letting them hear right now. Excited that their team has made it all the way back. Tied at 10. Now to LaRue. Now to the end zone. Lucas Adrian to the back of the end zone. Westfield fired up. They needed that one in the worst way. Westfield finally getting one back. They lead 11-10 here. This is going to be a spectacular finish. Johnny Sickles really using those fakes and putting them into effect. Eli Weaver to the end zone. That is a break for Westfield. And just like that, Westfield leads 12-10. Timeout call. Timeout call from Columbia. I believe that is their first of the second half. Let's go, come on. Hey, hey, the sideline does not stop screaming for the rest of the game. We got five minutes of active sideline. No one will have a voice after these five minutes. Hey, hey, listen, Josh. No one has a voice after these five minutes. We're active, we're talking to someone. All right, guys, leave it all out on the field. Kind of include your voice, uh, vocal cords. The sideline is the eighth man, and we have to be loud. Right? Our side, the stands are helping us, but we have to be the ones to carry this. Yo, let's go. Right there. Let's go, boys. Let's go, boys. It off to his pal Zach Singer who finds Aylan Learn learning with the break. Two Columbia players there. Ben Harris sliding, and that is going to be a goal for Columbia. A hard fought hold for CHS. Ben Harris bringing it in and making it one point once again. Downfield now looking to Spiegel. Chavi going on up, able to get it. Spiegel dishing it off. Laying out, and Brown unable to bring it in. The disc now, tossed up, knocked away. No chance for Westfield to even get on that. Nice box out defense from Binder there, and Learned coming over the top, taking a shot now, looking down here for Spiegel. Spiegel going up, and we have a tie game now in the state finals. Universe point, universe point. Double game point here, tied at 12. and take home a coveted state title. Sickles putting it up downfield. Weaver giving chase. Weaver going up and grabbing it. Not in the end zone, though. No. Finding Perry in the end zone, and it's bobbled and knocked away. Weaver with a quick little dish. Perry unable to bring it in on the layout. M. Upfield to Binder now, another swing. Downfield to Learned, Learned, reeling it in. Around now to Freeman Brown, and Freeman Brown unable to bring it in. Foul call on the mark though. Shovelin being called for the foul. The Westfield crowd unhappy with the call, but. It will go back. It's an uncontested to call too. I believe so. It's an un I believe it's an uncontested call. Yeah, Shavlin, a sophomore, been playing for several years now. Part of the Westfield Middle School program, working his way up. Knows the game well. Definitely going to make sure he makes the right call there. Weaver matching up with Freeman Brown in this handler space. Downfield shot from Learned. Looking downfield for Harris. Harris bringing it in. And Columbia is your 2018 state champions. Where are you going after this?
I'm going to McDonald's, baby! <laughs> Nothing like her in 